Hello folks, I have something a little bit different for you today. Most of my videos are electronics related, but we're taking a break from that today to work on this truck. This is a 1984 Chevy military pickup. It's a five quarter ton, one and a quarter ton pickup. It's been sitting here for about five years. It hasn't been run as long as, long as it has been here. I'm not sure when the last time was that it was running. And we're going to see what it takes to get it to fire up. It's pretty much intact. I think they painted it. Well, obviously they painted it, but I think they painted it and didn't finish putting it back together because there's a lot of cosmetic things that are missing, like the grill. The grill is here, it's just not installed. Uh, the wipers. There's a lot of trim work inside around the dash that's missing. So my guess is this was a project truck for someone. They painted it and uh, didn't even finish painting the doors. Didn't put anything back together on the truck and it's here now. There's a few things mechanically that we have to do to it, but not a whole lot. For the most part, this truck is intact. The alternator belts are missing, which makes me wonder what's wrong with the alternators. One of the alternators has a little bit of, of play in the bearings, so we can rebuild those. Not a big deal. Most of the wiring is all intact. The one thing that's missing is the glow plug control card and the glow plug relay. So we'll have to deal with that in a minute. All the major fluids are, are, in, are present. It'll need an oil change, of course, but the engine oil is up. Transmission fluid is there. You have to run the transmission to check the fluid properly. Brake fluid, power steering fluid, that's all good. And most importantly, the engine is not locked up. I took a socket and a breaker bar and put it on the bolt that goes into the crankshaft of the engine and was able to turn the engine over two full revolutions with no problem. I can tell it has compression, but I didn't feel anything out of the ordinary. Something else I should say about this truck is I don't have any experience working on diesels. This is a first for me. I, I know the theory and I've done a lot of studying and research, so I'm comfortable with what I'm about to do. But if you're following along, you may have a better idea of how to do things than I do. So don't take anything I say as uh, instruction. I'm sure I'll make mistakes along the way and I'm sure there's better ways to do some of the things I'm going to do. If you have suggestions, put them down in the comments below and look forward to hearing from you. So again, I am not an expert in diesels. I have a little bit of experience working on Chevy square bodies, like this truck here is my daily driver, but it's a gas truck. I don't know diesels. One thing I notice is that the drive shaft is out of the truck and there's a drive shaft in the bed, but this has a shipping label on it like it was bought on eBay or something. Found some straps and bolts for the drive shaft. So the first order of business is to take a look at this drive shaft, check it out and install it as long as it is in good shape. Here's a quick look at the inside. You see the door panels are missing. Some of the trim work on the dash is missing. It's full of leaves and debris. I've swept quite a bit of junk out of it, but the back window is also out of it. My guess is this truck sat outside for a period of time based on all the debris that's inside. The tag on the steering wheel says that it runs, but it doesn't shift right, and we'll get into that a little bit later. I think I know why that's not uh, shifting right. I should mention that my plan for this truck is just to use it around the yard. Not going to make it roadworthy, and for now I'm just going to do the, the bare minimum to get it running. We'll worry about some cosmetic things later, but again this is just, just going to be a yard truck, not a daily driver. Drive shaft doesn't look too bad, the U joints feel pretty good. It's got some rust on it, but otherwise it feels all right. You see it has a port for a grease fitting, but it just has a plug in it right now. And same with the U-joint on this end. Of course, they didn't line up the grease fittings when they put the U-joints in it. The fitting should be right here on the back end. It's not. It's over here. So, that's annoying. If I were putting this together, I would line those up. But otherwise, it's greasy inside. The needle bearings look pretty good. Of course, we'll, we'll grease all this when we put it together. Actually, I just realized it does have grease fittings. One right there, and 
one on the other end and they do line up. Right into a little problem here. This is the yoke out of the rear differential. I was putting the drive shaft in the truck and I noticed that these bolt holes were full of mud and debris and they were rusty. So I ran a wire brush through them quite thoroughly and then I ran a tap through them to chase the threads and clean the rust out. Here's the tap, there's the broken end, and there's the rest of it. Way down in there. You can see the other end of the tap right there. So yeah, got that to deal with. We'll come back to the drive shaft issue, but for now we can work on seeing if this will run. So before we can start it, there's just a few things left to do. Need a couple of batteries, of course. We need to replace the fuel filter, which is that rectangular box right there. The people in the know tell me that you always want to change that filter if the truck has been sitting for very long, and you want to change it on a regular basis anyways. That filter just has a paper media, and the diesel fuel gradually degrades that paper. And if you let it go too long, that paper media will fall apart and get into the injection pump and possibly even the injectors and plug them up. Definitely don't want that. So, I have a brand new fuel filter. There's the Wix part number, Wix33136. I think it's also a Delco TP1006. There's a Fram, there's a CarQuest part number, you can look them up online. Lots of different numbers, same filter. They're about 20 to 30 bucks, probably closer to 30 if you buy them in store. But from everything that I have heard about those, you want to change them. Don't cheapskate on that. I don't know what this filter's history is. It wasn't on the truck when I found it. It was just laying in the bed, and I just stuck it on the... Uh, I'll show you how this works. Okay, these little bales. There's a bale on top and a bale on the bottom. Flip those bales out, and it just slides right off. So yeah, that's a uh, CarQuest 86136. I found this just laying in the bed, and I just stuck it on that base plate just to keep the bugs out. Hopefully bugs didn't get in there before I did. Mud daubers are a real problem here where I live, and that's a great place for mud daubers to make nests. But I don't see any sign of mud daubers, and I can't tell about the line going to the injection pump, but... I hooked a tube up to this port right here. This port comes from the fuel pump. So a line comes from the fuel tank up through the fuel pump on the engine into this port. At this port it goes into the filter and comes out of the filter and goes back into this tube here where it goes into the injection pump. So anyways, I hooked a tube up here and pulled vacuum on it and I pulled a fuel sample now, I realize you can't tell a lot just by looking at a sample of diesel fuel, but it didn't look bad. There wasn't any obvious sediment or obvious goo. So I'm going to go ahead and see if I can start this with the fuel that's in the tank. Besides the fuel pump, there are two more things that this truck needs. The glow plug relay is missing, and that sits on the firewall right back here. And I have a video about that, about various types of automotive solenoids that you might enjoy taking a look at because there's different types and you can't always tell what they are just by looking at them. And the last thing is I checked all of the glow plugs and I found one that's faulty. I think I'll make a separate video on installing that solenoid and replacing the glow plug because that's a... I don't want to make this video too long and the glow plug system is kind of interesting on this truck and I think it's worth its own video. So I'll take care of those things and we'll be ready to go for a first start. We're almost ready to try to start this vehicle. I've installed two batteries. We'll see how well they hold up. This battery in front is eight years old and the battery in back is six years old. We'll see if they have enough snot to start this engine. I have installed a new fuel filter and I'm going to try to prime the filter with a vacuum pump. Not sure how well this is going to work but I figure if it works, it'll save us some cranking on the engine. So here's my test setup. This tube right here, this is part of the 
fuel filter housing, or it connects to the fuel filter housing. And on top of the fuel filter housing is a little uh, crossed cap right there, just above where that hose connects. And I've loosened that cap. So this is the bleeder for the fuel filter assembly. Now at this point I could just start cranking the engine until the mechanical pump primes the filter, but I'm going to try to use this. A little vacuum pump. This is the same way I pulled the fuel sample earlier. I'm going to just put that end of that vacuum pump on the end of this hose right here until I see fuel come up in it, and then I'll close the bleeder screw. There we go, I just saw fuel come up the pipe. Try it again. Yep, there's fuel there. I don't want to actually suck fuel into the vacuum pump, so that's why I shut it off right away. Well, that should give us a head start. Okay, I'll turn the key on. No oil pressure. That is fine. No alternators, but the lights work. Fasten belt. And the next thing we have to do is manually operate the glow plugs since we don't have the glow plug controller. Well, that was not exciting. Won't start. Not sure if the batteries are weak or if there's a wiring problem or what. I try to start the engine. Watch it work now. Try to get so you can see. The Gen 2 light stays on, and the temperature light comes on. Those lights are bright enough that I find it hard to believe that we have a dead battery problem. I also tried wiggling the shift lever. It's in park right now. Well, I tried wiggling that while I was turning the key in case it was a neutral safety switch. And that's not it. Okay, I figured out why it won't start. This truck has, because of its hybrid electrical system, has a starter solenoid on the starter right here and it also has a starter relay right here that allows a 12 volt ignition switch to send 24 volts to the starter I think but in any event that starter relay is missing it has been cut out entirely not real surprised on the Certainly on the 84 model years, and maybe even 85, there was a problem with those relays, and they were defective, and they would stay stuck on. Burn up the starter, burn up wires, all kinds of problems. So it's a good modification to replace that relay anyways. And well, this is missing, so that decision has been made for us. Okay, we're looking underneath the dash of the vehicle just to the right of the steering column. And this is a difficult place to put a camera, but those cutoff wires right there at the tip of my glove is where that relay used to connect. Here's a better look at those wires so you can see where we are right now. And I just pulled them through this hole. Looks like someone hacked a hole in the dash to put a radio in. So if the car had a radio, that's where it would be. These relays, one of these is for the second alternator, the other one is for the voltmeter up here on the dash. Uh, that's my understanding anyways. And they mount on this metal plate, which was just underneath the dash right down here. And then these wires right here is where the start relay would have been connected. So we need to splice into those and find a new relay. Here's my solution. This is a standard automotive starter solenoid, and yes, it's crooked, but it happened to line up with existing holes in that mounting plate, and if I can avoid drilling new holes, I like to avoid it. Maybe it'll bug me enough that someday I'll drill a new hole and move it, but 
there's enough room under the dash, this will work just fine. The other two relays can connect here and here. And there's enough room under the dash for all of these posts. They won't touch anything. The 24 volt feed from the battery will go to one of these big terminals and the lead going out to the starter goes to the other terminal. And I'll have to, to double check. One of these is the coil terminal here. That'll go to the ignition switch. And then there's a black ground wire under the dash. I'll put that underneath one of these screws. So that's the plan. I finished installing that new solenoid. A couple things to note. I realize that's an old grungy looking solenoid, and well it is. But I cleaned all of the connections that matter. All of the parts that make electrical connection, I cleaned. And also, that solenoid, even though that's a starter solenoid, that's overkill. That solenoid does not carry full starter current. That just carries the current going to the starter solenoid. So yes, it's a solenoid that powers a solenoid. But that's also known as the dog head modification, if you look around on the internet forums. So I'm not the only guy to come up with this. I can't say it's my idea. Just looked online, and that's what the guy suggests doing. At this point, I think we're ready to try to start it. I borrow some newer batteries. Let's try it again. Alright, sorry for the poor lighting. It's cold and windy outside, so I closed the doors in the barn. Just had a problem with the starter. Uh, went to try to crank the engine, and the starter made a grinding noise. So I pulled the starter, and, well, the starter appears to be okay, but I found some chipped teeth in the flywheel. So I put it back together, cranked the flywheel around to a good spot, and I'm going to resume trying to start the engine.
Yeah, he got the yoke back from a friend of my dad's. I don't know how he got the tap out, but he did. It looks good. So now we can put the drive shaft in. Now the drive shaft is in the truck. Let's see if it'll move. It's actually been sitting here for five days without running. So I'll be curious to see how easily it starts after sitting for five days. Well, it moves, but it does not have power steering or power brakes because they both run off from the power steering pump. So, more work to do. Still need to fix the power steering. Need to look at the alternators, put belts on the alternators. Uh, some cosmetic stuff like the rear window, the mirrors, uh, door gaskets, locks, I don't know. Just plug the hole, I might put locks in the doors. Again, this is just going to be a truck to use around the yard. Oh, and that front driver's side tire is losing air too. So a lot of little stuff to take care of, but I'm going to end the video right here. I'd say it, uh, our, uh, we were, this is a success. I wanted to just get it to run and move, and we did that. So a lot of little stuff to come, but it's working. <laughs>